I'm Sharon Swartz. We're at the Cannes Film Festival with Hub Culture. Jim Giannopoulos, co-chairman and CEO of Fox, has joined us today. Tonight, Wall Street's opening yep. at the festival. Yep. You've been here many, many times. Yep. What's it like to, uh, to just be back? And well, it's always nice to be here. Um, but it's especially nice to be here with Wall Street. Um, you know, you can always tell the heat, the buzz on a film by how many of friends you haven't spoken to in 20 years want tickets at the last minute and there's been an influx of requests, which is very good news. Right. People are really excited about the film and, and the reaction so far from the press, from people who've seen some of the you know, early screenings has been fantastic. Great. The, the cast and, and Oliver, everybody's happy, so it's all going well. Fantastic. Now, the date moved, the opening date for the film. You well, because of Ken. You know, Thierry and, and I had spoken about it, and, and he invited the film, and, you know, we thought a lot about it, but it's, it was an opportunity to showcase the film in Ken, so um, it was exciting for Oliver and for the, for the talent, so we thought it was a great idea. It's a perfect place to showcase it. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, you have a long history with the festival, and, of course, with, uh, with the international side of the business. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know that... Uh, one of the films that you brought to Cannes was Moulin Rouge. Yeah, that's when I first met Thierry. He does the Tell first us year. About he that. Yeah. Well, it was it was I sort of took it out of Baz's hands when he was in his final editing stages on the film, and um, and I brought it here. And Thierry had just started, and uh, I said, "You flew I had, to Paris." Yeah, yeah. I, well, I took the only copy of the film, so <laughs> um, the working the work print, but. Um, yeah, and I flew in and I, I said, I'm going to come in for the afternoon, I'll show you the film, and you make the decision. And he walked out he, and just said, we're, that's it, you can open the festival, you can have whatever you want. So wow. it was very exciting, and, and uh, it, it began a long and great friendship with, yeah. with Tui and, uh, and certainly with the festival, but that had I'd been here before that. But anyway, the Moulin Rouge was a really exciting exciting event here. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a big deal yeah, in Cannes that year. It was, it was. <laughs> and it was a great party. On the international side, you have a long history with um, with working on international distribution. Mm -hmm. What uh, the business has changed so much. What are your what are your thoughts about the international side of the business now that you're overseeing more at Fox? Well, um, look, we've I, we've always been an internationally oriented company for a very simple reason. It's a very big world. And yep. um, people are for, have been for many years very domestic centric um, and we certainly value the US market it's the biggest market in the world and in some ways the most important but we've always said that you know there are 300 some odd million people in the US and 6 billion people in the rest of the world right. so when you look at opportunities and growth and you know the, the future of the business it really is based in the international markets and that's been shown over the past 20 years you know or, and more is the way the markets have developed. We also had um, uh, our first Chinese production, the Hot Summer Days, was was interesting because we had two international productions. Sanford Panitch now runs our international production division, and uh, on the uh, on the same weekend, uh, Avatar was the biggest movie ar around the world. Hot Summer Nights, w Hot Summer Days, was the uh, biggest movie in China, which is the most populous country in the world, and My Name is Khan was the biggest movie in India, I mean, all on the same weekend. And the only place we weren't number one was in the U.S. Oh. So, you know, we were, we were fine. We, we, we were okay. Avatar did it, you know, managed to do okay anyway. But, but <laughs> it was exciting to see how, you know, how unique that was and what a wonderful weekend that was, yeah. for, especially for Sanford. So, um, yeah. so we hope to do more local productions in, um, in China. We're doing one, uh, we're doing several now around the world and we have another one in China but um, but uh, you know, it's a wonderful diverse great place to do business yeah now of course 3d that's exploding mm -hmm. H how how overseas they must be on top of it as well well but they got the it? memo you know yeah. I think avatar I think actually um, Ice Age um, over the summer was right. the first yeah. you know one of the first um, uh, um, bellwethers of, of, of the change and of course you know, there have been, uh, Jeff Katzenberg's been out there and Pixar and all those films and, you know, have been um, growing in, in popularity and encouraging theater owners to, to put in more 3D screens. But it was really beginning with Ice Age and with the anticipation of Avatar, um, which we showed at, um, at Cinema Expo in, um, in June, that people said, well, I'm not going to be the theater that can't show that right. in 3D. Yeah. 
and uh, the expansion of digital theaters I think makes it easier because it's at that point it's a bolt-on yeah. you know process yeah. putting you know the 3D lenses on so so you know it was just started to take off very quickly it actually was one of the one of the benefits of 3D which which Jim Cameron actually yeah. mentioned a couple of years back at um, at Show West is that it's much more difficult to copy an image yeah. you because know, the image is obviously it's blurred when you're not wearing the glasses and it's hard to put glasses around a camera and do all of that. So in 3D it, it is some help to piracy. Um, now our biggest concerns about piracy have less to do with the manner of exhibition than the ability of people to sit in a theater and, and capture it. And there are camcorder laws all over the world now and, and uh, you know people are much more conscious of it. But it's very difficult when you have films, any of you know, the big films and, and even the smaller films playing on thousands and thousands of screens. Yeah, yeah. Someone's going to get a copy. And then the question is, can you stop its, you know, its, its distribution? And there are some strides being made, but it continues to be a, you know, it's a long war. It's not going to end anytime soon. So, Jim, after the, the big premiere tonight for Wall Street, what, what are the rest of your can plans? Well, we have there are a couple of films that we're going to screen. And then uh, Sunday... Um, Probably with Michael Douglas, we're going to play hooky and, and go to the Grand Prix in Monaco for a few hours and um, and see that. Jean Todd is a friend and he's um, the head of FIA, so so we'll have sort of ringside seats and it'll be great. That's and, uh, the way to do it. And then yeah, and then back to work. So Monday morning, go home. Great, great. Well, yeah. thank you for joining us. Not at all. Good to see you. Good to see you. We are in Cannes on the Future Films boat. Jim Giannopoulos from Fox joined us today. I'm Sharon Swart with Hub Culture.